Tony, you have a very fascinating story, and there's something that you were the first person to do in the world. Would you share what that is? Uh, I'm the first African-American transgender to write a memoir about my life story, starting as a male and transforming to a preoperative transgender. What was it like to go uh, as a child and to realize that you were not the typical male? Um, I guess at about age six, I realized that I was different. Uh, I had carried on much effeminate characteristics in actions and in verbiage. Um, my parents considered it a soft child was the wording that was used in the very beginning from six to about twelve that I was a soft child, easy to hurt, easy to cry, very emotional, easily damaged. What did the other children think? Because I know kids can be sometimes bullying or mean. Was there any Mm. Feelings from the other children. I like excelled in school, so I was in the gifted program. So there's only eight to ten classes, ten people in my class. Most of them were geekish, and they were weird. I was different one way, and they were different another. Is there a moment when you kind of realize, hey, I'm different, and I need to change, and I need to still? But we're talking late '70s, so gender identity disorder was just not popular. I thought I was gay which is the first step. Most people identify as the Chaz. She came out as a lesbian. I came out as gay. Then you realize that I got there for a while and then realize that was later on that that wasn't really right. I didn't feel comfortable with the term gay. I then entered cross-dressing, my second phase, where I started dressing. And for entertainment, it wasn't entertainment for me. It was more of a persona more of a gender thing, and then I ended into transgenderism. For so, those that don't know what that term means, what is gender identity? Disorder? Gender identity is basically described that you were born as a man, but you have the characteristics, all the stuff of the opposite sex. You feel it and you personify it. How did it feel to finally dress as a man and start being able to act as a man would? I mean, you're in a male's clothes and Acting as if During that are. point, I was employed as a uh, college administrator, making very good money. Cross-dressing years were fun, um, but you know, cross-dressing is considered entertainment. RuPaul is a cross-dresser. That's entertainment. She does performances. I didn't perform, and that stage was fun for a while, but it didn't really satisfy that yearning or that urge that I had deep within my, my inner persona. deal with racism, I mean, African Americans have often f faced racism as well as transgendered people has often faced uh, things. Have you felt... I experienced it double, being an African American, and then you take African American and translate that into transgenderism because I'm discriminated within my own African American and minority community. What's the best lesson you've written in your book that you would share with other people? I wish that, for me, I wish I'd have finished graduate school. I've got a year of law school and two years of a master's not completed. I wish before I had made my transformation, I would have completed my graduate work. It would have put me in a better situation now. What would you tell someone that wants to open up to their friends or to their parents and admit that they're transgender or gay or lesbian? What would you say the best advice to help them open up? Every circumstance is different. I come from a middle class Christian family. Bible study, youth, um, study, go to school. It wasn't feasible for me. Um, they knew I was probably gay at 13, and it was okay. You know, wasn't a big deal. They knew it, we never spoke of it. I came out in college, came home my sophomore year and said, you know what, I'm gay. We know, you know, you, as long as you stay in school and do okay. You know, I waited, you know. Um, most of my transgender buddies came out at 15, 14, was wearing makeup at high school. That just wasn't feasible for me. And I think a lot of them think, you know, I, I got to be me. And I'm with that. But some circumstances, if you're in the Bronx, you're in some parts of Brooklyn, it's just not feasible. You are putting yourself in a bad situation. In my high school, nothing would have happened. It was mainly white in a white neighborhood. There was no gangster, so to speak. I might have been teased if I would start wearing makeup and dresses to school, but I just didn't. It just I didn't have enough courage at the time. So it took about 10 years later for me to build up the courage to rise 
and uh, it, it took meeting Maya Angelou at Wake Forest as a Reynolds professor, meeting her poem, I Rise. You know, I rise from the dirt, so I rise from the ground. You may think I'm nothing, but still I rise. So the book is based on I Rise, the transformation of Tony Newman. Well, thank you so much. Can you show us the book and how we can find it? If you want My to book it? is available on Amazon.com through Kindle, and uh, you can get hard copy, Barnes and Nobles, um, about 50 libraries in about 20 states carry a free copy if you like to read it. Um, it goes from chapters 1 through 10 and talks about my beginning. The last part is for transgenders only. It gives you steps on how to proceed into transgenderism um, safely, cautiously, and, and uh, to do it with good humor instead of going through all of the turmoil and drama that I went through. So for transgender, read chapter 10. And uh, you can reach me at Tony D. Newman on Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter, and TonyDNewman.com. And if you're transgender, email me. If you think you're transgender, email me. I have contacts with therapists, uh, psychiatrists from the American Psychiatric Association who has read the book and agree with me. And uh, we'll see what we can do to point you in the right direction in whatever state or condition you find yourself in.